That was close. What are you doing here? Uh, I came in through the door. Idiot. I felt like smacking myself. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. The editor is saying that that's telling, not showing. So I may have to rework this whole thing. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another video. So I hope you enjoyed that little skit. Um, but... Basically, I'm just going to get right into the video. So I have been editing Rogue again. So a little bit of background is I edited it, sent it to beta readers, went through their comments, edited it again, sent it back to them um, to get their feedback. And I heard back from two of them. So I addressed, I edited it one more time using Pro Writing Aid to help with the grammar issues one person had. And then the other beta reader had a tr had trouble with one of the relationships in Rogue, so I asked for help, and I got back. Um, this one woman named Susan got back to me, and she's been going through it and finding other issues, and that's the issue we're going to talk about today. So if you already haven't figured it out, um, the issue that we're talking about today is about show versus telling. Telling versus showing, showing versus telling, whatever you want to call it. This is the golden rule of writing, and it's advice that you're always given is to always show, not tell. It's pretty much preached into us. No matter what kind of um, advice you're given, you're always told to show, not tell. And that's true. Um, and I think for the most part, um, I've got this... It, I mean, it's not always easy, um, but for the most part, I do this really pretty well, I think, in my current works. Um, and I write a lot in third person. So here's the challenge that I'm having in Rogue. Rogue, not only did I write it a long time ago when I was a young writer, so there's bound to be a lot of telling instead of showing just because I was young and inexperienced, but it's also written in first person. And I haven't written in first person since, well, mostly recently, the only time I do is writing um, continuations or extra scenes in the Valiant series. But the last time I really did write first person hardcore was in the earlier Valiant books. Since then I've switched permanently to third person and that is the perspective I choose and prefer to write in, um, prefer to read in really. There's nothing against first person, I just personally don't like it and for me personally it feels more immature. My writing gets more immature when it comes to writing first person. I do much better in third person. Um, so, but here's the thing. And I want to discuss this, and I actually polled Facebook, so we're going to go through the comments. I have not looked at them, so we're going to go through and get other people's opinions, and then I want you to tell me your opinion in the comments below, and let's start a conversation about this. Because, here's the thing, in first person, the character themselves is the narrator. I find, I personally have a desire to be true to their character voice, um, and... Not all characters who are in the first person are going to be really deep and insightful. They're not all going to be writers and authors who are going to go into these long, drawn-out descriptions and stuff like that. So I do think that in first person there is a, a need to stay true to the character's voice because they're the ones telling the story. So the story's always skewed because you're being told one side of the story. In third person, you are the narrator, so yes, the character voice does need to come through, especially when you go into deep third person narrative, but um, you also are the narrator, so you can have moments where you launch into explanations and descriptions and show people things, um, but with first person, you have to be true to the character voice, and sometimes in this case that I'm having, my character Linnea, she is very clumsy. She doesn't really think too deeply until moments where she's forced to think deeply. Um, she's very naive and young, and she just, she's very fun, um, kind of a joking, smiling, bubbly type woman, and she's not very deep. And so, as we're going through, I'm adding in these things, I'm fixing what, the, what Susan pointed out, and we came across this line. Glancing up from my knees, I grinned at the man in a blue uniform who glared down at me. Uh, I came in through the door. Idiot. I felt like smacking myself. 
Now here, Susan mentioned that this is telling, not showing. Um, obviously, you could go into how you feel when you feel like smacking yourself, which I'm assuming would be some sort of embarrassment, so your cheeks would flush. Um, your Maybe you could rub the back of your neck. You could kind of look down at the ground. You could like hold your head in your hands. You could actually smack yourself. Um, you know, you could mentally cringe. There's a lot of different movements that you could do to show how she's feeling and what this feels like. And in the most times, this really immerses the readers into the story so that they feel what your character feels. So if you're afraid, you don't just say the character's afraid. You describe that the fear like forms a pit in your stomach and it twists your stomach and, and you get this cold slither up your spine and then the readers feel it with your character as opposed to if you just said, I'm afraid. The readers are not going to feel anything. But in first person, you do have moments like this where I feel like smacking myself is exactly what she's thinking. And that's exactly what how she would say that. There's really no other way that she would say this. And that's the question is, are there occasions when you're writing first person where it's okay to tell for the sake of keeping the character voice intact? Um, because if you show, 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 your character's not always going to be like that. I want to be realistic, and in real life, people don't think like that, and people don't talk like that. And so especially in dialogue, um, people, I write dialogue the way that actual people talk, where there's stuttering, there's hesitations, there's repeats, there is um, grammar mistakes and errors, especially where I live, we are Missourians, so we are very hickish here, we're very country, we... I don't speak grammatically correct at all. I don't write or type grammatically correct. I actually have a lot of phrases that I say that I thought were one thing that are actually a different thing. My husband had to correct me when he was editing. Um, in other words, I thought it was another words, but that's the hick phrase coming out. It's in other words, apparently, but that's distracted. Back on point. Is it okay to tell if you're being true to the character voice, when specifically when you're writing in first person. That's the question for today. Let me know your opinions down below, and we're going to get into what people on my Facebook, in the Facebook group, I asked what they said. So let's get into this. So again, I've never read these comments. I don't know what they're saying. So And struggle with the same issue in first person, so I'll be going through this with my own edits soon. That said, I think there's an opportunity to show more here. Example, how could I be such an idiot yet again? Idiot, will I never learn? idiot. I'll lose my own head if it wasn't glued to my body. Okay, um, so what she's saying is additional comments from the character's perspective, um, which is similar to deep narrative in third person, um, which is where they're talking, and it's not direct thoughts, but it's in their head, like, you know, instead of just saying, idiot, I felt like smacking myself, you could say, idiot, and then launch into, like, she's, it's not that she's forgetful um, in this case, so I need, I could elaborate on exactly what she's going through. Um, basically, Linnea making an additional comment besides just smacking myself, kind of elaborating more about what the internal thought is here. So I guess the reason I should ask myself with this when I'm editing this is why does Linnea feel embarrassed here? Why does she feel like smacking herself? In this case, I think it's because she was, she stated the obvious. Um, so idiot, in this case, idiot, why did I always feel the need to state the obvious? I felt like smacking myself. Okay, so adding in the additional comment there makes where we get into the head more, so that's a bit more showing. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, and shout out to Amelia Goodyear. Um, next we have, could you just leave it as idiot? The single word draws on a reader's emotion sufficiently. Most have experienced something that made them feel like smacking themselves. Sometimes the solution is not to say it differently, but to say less. Um, yeah, usually it's a golden rule in most writing that less is more. And so I do see what she's saying. I still feel like something needs to be there. Um, maybe it's because I'm too attached to Linnea's commenting. And uh, it's really the desire to just add more to Linnea to show her funny side because this is more set up as a lighthearted kind of comedic fantasy. So does I want to just let myself work better? It moves the feel, tell, and tightens the psychic distance. I think I'm an idiot here personally, so I want to smack myself now <laughs> because I don't understand the difference between slap and smack and why one of them creates a distance and a feel versus a tell. Um, oh, it, re it removes the word feel. I wanted to instead of I felt like. That actually is stronger, so I will give her that. So I wanted to smack myself because smacking is present tense a little bit too much and then felt like added that extra thing. 
So yeah, that's these are really good advice here. Um, and I understand the the feel is telling, like I felt like is telling us that she felt that way, as opposed to showing us with her thoughts that she feels like an idiot or that she wants to smack herself. It's just the idea that in this case, she really does feel like smacking herself. So it's like, I that's what she's thinking, you know, so I don't want to just allude to it. I want to be specific in what she feels. Um, it's not always better to show rather than tell, unless you can convey those emotions in the same amount of words. If you really felt good about the sentence, keep it. However, I do believe you could change the thought completely and remove the smacking yourself part if that's what's tripping you up. So his suggestion was just cutting the thought altogether. Um, I am still debating about cutting this line. I think I wanted to smack myself as a little is worded better than what it was. It is the word felt that actually felt like telling. So if you have a sentence that show that is telling um, if you're in first person, I guess one of the tips that we're learning here is using the word felt. I felt is telling. So um, open up the character and instead of saying I felt this, 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 then elaborate and have them think specific thoughts or talk about their specific thoughts like this. Idiot, why did I always feel the need to state the obvious? Um, again, the other uh, commenter up above, Amelia, her example was really good. How could I be such an idiot again? Will I ever learn? I'd lose my head if it wasn't glued to my body. So so when you're writing first person, what we're learning here from these writers and their advice and experiences is that you don't state directly that they felt a certain way just because it is the first person perspective. Um, like I may say I'm angry, but this is a story and so I still need to be specific. If I was writing myself into a book, I would say specifically why I'm angry or whatever. Um, and then um, less is more. Um, which is true no matter what perspective you're writing in. And then, um, you know, show don't overshow, um, I think would be the takeaway here. So you don't always want to show rather than tell unless you can evade those exact same emotions in the same amount of words um, because you don't want, you know, and you don't want to overwhelm the readers. And then you also want to make sure that you remove anything that may be tripping you up because it may be best to take it out of the book instead of leaving it in there if you're stumbling over something as you're reading it, whether you're reading it out loud or to yourself or whatever the case is. So those are the takeaways that we've seen from this advice so far from these wonderful writers. Shout out to Supporting Beginning Writers on Facebook. Um, they're an amazing group. I've gotten so much help from them. So the next comment is, I wonder if your editor is targeted. You're using the word felt as that's a sure sign of telling. Um, some might argue it's a, it, its use is okay in first specifically, but I tend to think in any instance and from any POV, it's still telling. Although the phrase is well known and carries meaning, in effect, you're only telling readers the character wanted to slap herself, not why. Yeah, and this is very true. I agree. I really appreciate AJ's advice because I didn't realize that when I was struggling with this yesterday. Um, and even when I started the beginning of this video, and I think that this goes back to what Amelia was saying um, and what Amelia her sentences here added why the person wanted to smack themselves reasons why this character did and then that all that got me to thinking well why actually did uh, Linnea want to feel like smacking herself here and that's where I had to add this in at least um, it could do with a little more I suppose um, but I think that that is actually true and I that made me realize that okay I needed to show why she felt like smacking herself because until I thought that in this when I wrote this line just a few minutes ago I didn't know why she felt like smacking herself I just knew that she did feel like smacking herself so that's very very true these writers are so good man um this is an editor you really trust I'm forever getting new writers for telling instead of showing that this sentence reads fine to me okay um so everybody disagrees um I do trust Susan she's given me so much advice already um and so that's a random tip for another day, but you do want to make sure that you do get an editor that you do trust. And in this case, um, Susan's graciously doing it to me for free. Idiot, I could smack myself. Idiot, I could have smacked myself. Not sure what your editor is after, but maybe the removal of description of the protagonist feeling might help. Yeah, it seems to be the consistency here is that the word feel is what's telling. And like the person said above, um, felt is a sure sign of telling. So that is the main takeaway here that whether you're writing in first person or third person, but specifically when you're writing in first person um, is telling sometimes better than showing because you want to stay true to the character's voice using you can still be true to the character's voice 
while avoiding the word felt. Saying, I felt this way is a sure sign of telling. And that's the lesson that we're learning from these experienced writers here, which I did not know. And so I actually was able to stay true to Linnea's voice here and even changing it to wanted to. That's still true to uh, Linnea's voice, all while not showing not telling anymore because I took away the felt part honestly this is mind-blowing like are you guys as mind-blown did you guys know this because I feel like a dummy like I'm kind of linear right now like idiot why didn't I know that you can show and stay true to the character's voice by simply taking out the word felt that's this is mind-blowing quite honestly I'm of the opinion that if someone is trying to expressly forbid sentences like I felt like smacking myself under any circumstances whatsoever they're too big for their britches it does sound like someone's natural internal monologue to me and if I came across that sentence as a reader I would never think wow what an emotionless detached narrative like I do when I usually read overly telly prose I mean maybe your problem is overusing statements like that or something which could be valid but seriously if a natural and character filled sentence like that is 100% outlawed by the eternal council of good writers I want out <laughs> there's the council and we have forbade you to use this sentence that's really funny um, and that's honestly my attitude yesterday. So while I am leaving the sentence in there, I did need to fix it and change the word felt so that it was less telly. And I needed to add another line or two that talked about and really expressed the reasons why she felt like an idiot. And so now I'm actually happy with the way it is. And it still feels true to Linnea's voice. And that's the problem that I had. As you can see, I went on a little rant here to myself and to Susan as kind of a little note for the things I was struggling with. So I totally see her perspective. I think you're still telling, um, again, the opinions are all over the place. So take this as it is. And I'm really interested to see your guys' opinions in the comments. I think you're still telling, can you show it through the actual sensations or actions versus labeling the emotion or feeling? Embarrassment can be shown in felt different ways. Face heating up is one example, or actually smacking your forehead or banging it against the wall, shrinking away or looking away. One great source to show versus tell is an emotional type of thesaurus. Basically, you want to have the reader see here and a thought or dialogue and possibly feel it in the right POV. I do see what this person, uh, Tori, is saying. I kind of disagree because that's the problem that I had with Linnea's voice is that she is not going to explain or show her embarrassment or talk about how her cheeks are flushed. It feels very out of character to go that deep because she's not a deep person. And in this case, the deep part was that she felt like smacking herself. But we were able to express that in a more mature way by saying, I wanted to smack myself. It's the same thing. That's what she's thinking. And then we can expand upon what she's thinking by saying, why did I always feel the need to state the obvious? That's exactly why she felt like smacking herself. So now we've explained why and the sentence is still there and I still feel like it's being true to Linnea's character. Um, so I would say that this advice is also really sound and in the most part you do want to be true to this and, and that is actually the key to showing versus telling and this is what I do in third person all the time. You describe the emotions and what they feel like. So in this case it is embarrassment so you would describe the cheeks being flushed or you know a hand kind of rubbing the back of your neck like this or looking down or maybe fiddling with with your the ends of your shirt or something like that smacking your forehead or banging it or shrieking away or looking away like um uh, kind of embarrassed like oops that kind of thing um by describing what the emotion makes you feel your readers will actually feel it with your characters and that's very true but you have to consider in first person because your narrator is the character how would they describe this emotion how does it feel to them and that's where you need to be careful and sometimes it may be a little telly um, but you can write it in a non-telly way as we've learned thanks to all this amazing advice so what are your thoughts on showing versus telling in first person do you agree with the advice that we've been given here or do you disagree um, do you think it's okay to tell if your character is has a certain voice or a way of talking um, have you had experiences with showing versus telling or writing in first person share it with us in the comments below and if you did like this advice in this video please give it a like button for all of the amazing writers and their advice and especially for Susan who is editing rogue for free please 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 hit the like button um, Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more writing advice just like this every Monday. I don't know about you, but showing versus telling in first person has been something that I really struggled with over the last couple of days. So this advice has been really helpful to me. If you struggle with writing dialogue, then click here. This video will tell you everything you need to know about it.